rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the singing of the national anthem, and the invocation. Bolson, post the sideboards. Aye, Chief. Sideboards, post. Sideboards, left, all right, peace. Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, arriving. Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, arriving. Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Lieutenant Colonel Chad Rigger will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to celebrate a life of service. As Chief Carter gets ready to retire after 21 years, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. For our family, for Shannon and their marriage of uh, over 17 years, Father, through deployments and sea voyages, Father, across oceans and the miles uh, in war and in peace, Father, long hours stateside and even longer hours downrange. Father, we thank you that you have gracefully protected this family. We thank you for uh, the Carter's kids, for Xavier and Imani, Father, for the great things that they are doing uh, in high school and the way that their father's eyes twinkle when he talks of them and Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve this great nation. 
Father, today we pray that as we celebrate uh, 21 years of service and as Chief gets ready to retire, that this would be a time that just honors a life well lived thus far and launches into the next chapter uh, of a life well lived going forward. In your precious and your holy name we pray. Guests, please be seated. Side boys, post. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the presiding officer, Globe Operations, Information Operations, Deputy Director, J39, Rural Admiral, Jeffrey Caesar Cherico. You got the name right, thank you. That's, that's well done. Um, Chief, thank you for asking me to be the presiding officer. I know you got a fantastic speaker coming up as well. What a great rendition of the national anthem. That is absolutely Chief, we got your uncle here, your aunt, please raise your hand so everybody knows where you are. Thank you so much for coming, your sister, brother-in-law, yep. there we go, sorry, I gotta get that straight, I got a bunch of kids, I'm gonna have the same problems here, so. <laughs> uh, Shannon, Imani, uh, Xavier, uh, they're all in the front row here. Um, take my cover off here for a second. I'm just gonna speak for a few minutes. Um, you know, I had the distinct honor, no kidding, honor and pleasure of commissioning Shannon, Captain, uh, U.S. Air Force in front of me. How many months ago was this? About six. Yeah, and and there are things as a uh, commissioned officer that that bring great joy. It's uh, it's uh, re-enlisting a sailor. It's promoting an officer. It's commissioning an officer. What's what's fantastic, and to our joint uh, team here, the Navy is filled with tradition. We're senior chief. We talked about that just a little bit ago. The Navy is filled with tradition. And uh, you're seeing some of that here. And the, the, the biggest challenge is when, the, when you're in the Navy, you go, to, you go to sea, you go away from home. There's a lot of memories built in, uh, in the absence of your family, a lot of experiences, and then you come back and have to reintegrate. You know, Chief and I have both done many deployments, and that's a challenge. And it's uh, a, uh, a uh, my hats off to uh, your family, Shannon, for, for holding the team together, and uh, kids for being so, Outstanding. I, I, I love your uniform. A good joint. The light blue ish is good. This is nice. It's good. But but what's what's really fascinating to me is uh, that uh, Shannon came in about six months ago and Chief Lee is leaving now. That torch is being handed off. That torch of service. And uh, you got to continue to carry carry that load and to see the next generation, uh, you know, experiencing the the the. Uh, uh, the call of the service as well is just fascinating. And I want to reflect back just a real quick what, about, about a chief, okay? So uh, I was raised by a chief, not my dad, not my mom. I was raised in the Navy by a chief. Uh, I signed that out in your book, Senior Chief Heard. I was a, a young A6 pilot and uh, back in VA-75 in, uh, in uh, Naval Air Station Oceania, I was young, I was dumb, I was cocky, I was clueless really cocky, clueless, and dumb kind of all at the same time. And that's, uh, that's, that's an embarrassment to admit. And I had the most wonderful Chief Petty Officer that raised me. He really raised me to become a leader. All the good in me is from my Chief. All the bad in me are my families. Okay, but it really comes down to where's the Chief? What did the Chief say? What's he think? Who get me the Chief? That's the thing I want you to remember as we recount Chief Carter's service. And I'll tell you, Chief Heard, you know, there's one time, I had a really, really bad night. I'm in the Navy, it's a sea store. I had a really, really bad night coming aboard the carrier. Uh, lucky to be alive, probably because of lack of talent on my part, an ailing jet. And it was so bad. The weather was so bad. The, uh, the jet was so broken. I, I, for the first time in my life as a Navy, I said, I'm gonna die. 
but I didn't, so that was a good thing. But I remember stopping my jet in the landing area, and those of you who've been on a carrier, to stop the jet in the landing area and shut it down there. Something was you know, remarkably wrong with that airplane. Uh, couldn't tow it, right? And I was flying it just a few seconds before. And uh, kind of opened the canopy, climbed down the boarding ladder, and my chief was at the bottom of the ladder. And I had vertigo so bad I actually fell over on the flight deck. I couldn't stand up. But what did my chief do? He picked me up, put my arm over his shoulder, walked me down to the ready room. I was white as a ghost, shaking left and right. And I also knew I didn't want to do this job anymore. My chief sat with me in the ready room. He knew I was scared. He knew I was young. He knew you know, it was just a bad situation. And my skipper did the right thing. He put me back on the night schedule the next night in the same freaking jet, which was interesting. And uh, what I remember is, you know, chiefs aren't plane captains, are they, chief? No, but Randy Hurd was my plane captain for that next launch. And he showed up at the base of that boarding ladder and saluted me, did my walk around together, and then he launched me off the deck and handed me off to the other shirts. And so what I, what I, I bring that up because the, the form of the critical role of a chief petty officer in the United States Navy, and quite frankly, the Joint Force. And I'd ask you, whether you're a chief or not, but if you have a role of leadership, of development, of teaching, of brotherhood, fatherhood, motherhood, that's what a chief is. Look in the mirror and say, am I that chief? I had that chief, and I continue to have that chief. The chief, like I wrote in your book, you're my chief. Love you like a brother. Congratulations. Let's reflect on 21 years of service. Thank you, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, Chiefs Carter guest speaker, ITC Larry Mills, could not make it to the ceremony today. He pre-recorded his remarks to celebrate Chiefs Carter's retirement, which we will now watch play. Good morning, Admiral Jericho, Chief Carter, the Carter family, and friends. Over my 21 years of service, I've attended many retirement ceremonies just like this one. And during those ceremonies, I would always hear the guest speaker say, it's an honor and a privilege to be before you. Until this moment, I didn't quite understand what was really meant by that. But as I join you today, I can honestly say, it's an honor and a privilege to be before you. Now, let me tell you why. For 12 years, I've had the opportunity to get to know Chief Emilio Carter. Although I originally started out as his mentor, over the years, we became good friends and brothers. By now, you have had a chance to read through Chief Carter's biography, but those words on the paper only give you a small peek into his distinguished career. From the moment I met him, I knew he was a cut above the rest. I can say without a shadow of a doubt that he embodies the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Chief Carter displayed all those values at the very beginning of his Navy career. As a wide-eyed airman, he accomplished things expected of sailors far senior to him, such as earning his air warfare qualification and being designated as lead plane captain, all within the, his first three years in the Navy. That was an indication of things to come. After completing ITA school and while on a two year stint on board USS Abraham Lincoln, he earned his second of four warfare qualifications. And for those of you who may not be familiar with warfare qualifications, they are extremely difficult to earn and most sailors don't have more than a couple. So to obtain four warfare qualifications is an incredible accomplishment. Again, Chief Carter has been the epitome of honor, courage, and commitment. During the same time that he was establishing himself within the Naval ranks, he married the woman of his dreams, U.S. Air Force Captain Shannon 
Nonary Carter, who he met while in Washington State. They have two beautiful children, Imani and Xavier, who are the apple of their dad's eye. Every time we talk, he brags proudly about their accomplishments, including the fact that they are both in junior ROTC, albeit Air Force junior ROTC. Imani, your dad is so excited about his retirement and the opportunity it will afford him to be there for you as you decide what college you will attend next year. Xavier, your father has been overjoyed watching you grow while participating in junior ROTC, a program that will provide you with a solid foundation of service above self and work ethic. As evidenced by your scholastic and extracurricular activities, we can see that both of you have grown to become the young lady and young man your dad wants you to be. This is a direct result of the morals and character instilled in him. And now we see that he has passed this on to the two of you. I'm no stranger to Chief Carter's hard work and dedication. My first encounter with IT2 Carter was in 2008 on the very day that he was participating in the selection board for enlisted person of the quarter at US PACOM a highly distinguished award that's reserved for the best of the best. I was able to give him some words of encouragement and accompany him to his board. And of course, Emilio blew away the board members, making his selection as enlisted person of the quarter an extremely easy decision. That day was the coordination of the great friendship between Emilio and I. In addition to the accolades on his bio, Chief Carter has so many amazing attributes that I think should be highlighted. First, he's committed and driven. That's proven by his 17 years of marriage and 21 years of service to our great country. He's also one of the most positive people that I know. There's never a time or circumstance where Chief Carter does not have a smile on his face. He is constantly offering words of encourage, encouragement and seeks to uplift others. Lastly, he's always prepared and ready to tackle any obstacle presented before him. It's for all these reasons that I am so honored to share in this ceremony today. Over the years, it has become commonplace to, sell, to tell service members, thank you for your service. In receiving some of those thanks, it occurred to me that quite often the, the person offering the thanks also served and actually understands the sacrifice of our service members. And for those that did not serve, I used to wonder, what were they thanking us for? Are they thanking us for contributing to something greater than ourselves? like Chief Carter has? I'm not sure, but here's what I do know. Chief, I would like to thank you for your service and sacrifice. And so Gwen, his sister, and, uncle, and his uncle Mario, I'd like to thank you for sending us an honorable man, a trusted mentor, a respected leader, a man led by a moral compass and an exceptional sailor. With Veterans Day coming up next week, I would also like to salute all those that have served honorably because although many do serve, not all do so honorably. And that is not something we should take lightly. Today, at the conclusion of this ceremony, we will have a new member amongst the retired ranks. And we can say he didn't just serve, Chief Carter served honorably. I have no doubt that the exact same will be said for all of the service members in attendance today. 
because you have to be cut from the same cloth as Chief Carter or you wouldn't be here today. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being great shipmates. I appreciate all the family members in attendance. And to the Joint Chiefs staff, I appreciate you for taking care of my brother and friend. Chief, I remember receiving that 4 a.m. call from you when you made IT1. I was there when your anchors were pinned on in 2012. And although I can't be there in person to celebrate with you today, I'm honored that you wanted me to share in this momentous occasion. Congratulations on your retirement. It's very well deserved. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Alma Cherico will now present Chief Carter with his retirement award. Guests, please rise and remain standing for the presentation of awards. Attention to award. The Secretary of Defense takes pleasure in presenting the Defense Meritorious Service Medal to Chief Petty Officer Emilio H. Carter, United States Navy. Chief Petty Officer Emilio H. Carter, United States Navy, distinguished himself by outstanding meritorious service as system administrator and security manager, deputy director for global operations, operations director, the joint staff from July 2017 to November 2020. During this period, Chief Petty Officer Carter displayed unmatched leadership and technical expertise by managing a global classified voice, video, and data network supporting more than 190 sites and nearly 3,000 users. The distinctive accomplishments of Chief Petty Officer Carter culminated a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Navy, and the Joint Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Rama Cherico will now present Chief Carter with his fleet reserve certificate. From the Armed Forces of the United States of America, this is to certify that Chief Information Systems Technician Emilio H. Carter was transferred from active duty to the Fleet Reserve of the United States Navy on the 31st day of January 2021 after 21 years of service. The certificate is awarded as a testimonial of faithful and honorable service. Signed, A.L. Cobb, Captain, United States Navy. Ramon Cherico will now present Chief Carter with letters of appreciation from the Presidents of the United States and the Governors of California, Washington State, and Maryland. Very popular man. <laughs> Dear Chief Carter, congratulations on your retirement from the United States Armed Forces. I am proud to have served as your Commander in Chief. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you for your contributions to our security and to the cause of peace and freedom. Chief Carter will also be present presented with letters of appreciation and coins from the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Chief of Naval Operations, and the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. Dear Chief Carter, over the past many years, you committed yourself to unselfishly in service to our nation. And it is my sincere honor and privilege to congratulate you on this extremely memorable day as we recognize you and your family on retirement from the United States Navy. In our service, there is a saying, officers run the Navy. However, Chief Petty Officers make it run. Chief, you made the Navy run. As we render honors today and bid farewell to a shipmate going ashore, 
know that I extend my personal thank you for all your sacrifices and, and for our sailors, their families, and our name. Will the family please join Chief Carr, center stage. Ryan Macherico will now present certificates of appreciation to Chief Carter's family, Captain Shannon Nunnery Carter, Ms. Imani Carter, and Mr. Xavier Carter. Certificate of appreciation from the United States Navy to all who see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that by the authority vested in me, it is my pleasure to express the grateful appreciation of the United States Navy to you and your unselfish, faithful, and dedicated assistance during the naval service of your husband and father, Chief Carter. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible his lasting contribution to our nation. Signed, A.L. Cobb, Captain, United States Navy. Jericho. I'm sitting down now. <laughs> On behalf of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Petty Officers Association, Chief Adams will now present Chief Carter with a sea chest from the Joint Staff Chiefs Petty Officers Association. The sea chest, ladies and gentlemen, is a farewell keepsake given by shipmates to a fellow retiring shipmate, which symbolizes the strong bond among sailors in our Navy. Our flag is encased at the top of the sea chest. The sea chest details the awards earned by Chief Carter throughout his naval career and contains artifacts representing his career path and items that are remnants from the United States Navy's initial strikes against the terrorist groups responsible for the 9-11 attacks in Afghanistan. Lastly, the insignias are permanent fixtures to the sea chest to represent those impacted by the mentorship provided by Chief Carter throughout 21 years of honorable and dedicated service. The ceremony you're about to witness pays tribute to our nation's most cherished symbol, our national ensign. The passing of the flag represents the sacrifice of men and women in uniform, past, present, and future. We all gave some, some gave all. Flag detail, post.
flying on top of the world's tallest buildings. I stand and watch the American's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, truth, honor, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I'm arrogant. I am proud. More than 200 years, I have fought in every battle and every war. Gettysburg, Siler, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, Trenches of France, Antioch, Rome, the Oregon Forest, the jungles of Guam, Okinawa, Tower, Korea, Vietnam. Sands of Kuwait and Iraq, and the mountains of Afghanistan. I led my soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. I followed them. I stood watch over them. They loved. Guard over the new frontiers of space. 
I have many silent witnesses of all of America's worst and finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I am torn into strips to be used as bandages on the field of battle for my wounded comrades. When I'm flown at half mass to honor my soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines. When I'm laid in the trembling arms of a mother, a father, a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, to face up their fallen love. I am proud. My name is O Glory. Long may I wait. Dear merciful God, long may I wait. today was flown over the Arabian Gulf on 12 January 2020 in an E-818 growl by VAQ-134 during deterrence presence patrol operations in honor of Chief Carter's retirement from the United States Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the man of the hour, Chief Emilio Carter. Is there a money this question to you? <sighs> because I have some friends that was left behind. ENC Bemis. He's not away with us because uh, the much he sees him, uh, he took his life. And, uh, and uh, Lieutenant Kaysenberg, uh, who was my demo out there in, in the Middle East. So I'm not allowed to, to have you and Stephen uh, do that for me because sitting down with you for two hours and listening to your story and what you had to go through. 
it's a great honor for me. just still doing my own, uh, doing that ceremony in, in your memory's memory. And anybody else that has us on that field. I don't even want you to hear too bad. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me go off my script. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you uh, again, Steve, uh, for the ceremony. I, this, I've never seen anything like that before. And, uh, we did that at Tamika's, and um, I had to have you here because uh, I thought of my uh, comrades that I served with. Um, and that's what I reflect on when you did it for me. Thank you. Jerry, awesome national anthem. Uh, the Admiral was right. Um, brought it home. I appreciate you and, and working with you uh, all these years. And, and, and there's more to come. Thank you very much for doing that for me. Uh, Admiral, uh, thank you sir, for being my presiding officer. Um, you, yes, you, you were uh, a, a really pivotal part of our family, uh, bringing in my wife, uh, Captain Nunnery, uh, into the Air Force, and now sending me off. Um, I love uh, sitting in the office and looking at uh, all your pictures and hearing the stories behind that because um, I'm a man that loves these stories and, and looking at those pictures on your wall and, and, and seeing you explain that battle that you were in and where you took out all those terrorists, dropped some bombs and supported our troops on the ground. I also thought about that when we started this happening. Thank you, sir. Mr. Neeson, uh, thank you for your guidance, um, for helping me um, through the office uh, and also um, helping me transition and giving me the sound advice I needed uh, to get uh, where I'm at today. So thank you, sir. J39, <laughs> um, PSD, SAD, SPAD, I don't know if I said those words, but I want to say thank you. Uh, the J39 is a unique office, uh, comprised of senior officers that support the chairman and his mission. And um, being a part of that was something that was special to me and I had the honor and privilege of doing. Um, I'm around the best and the brightest every day. Uh, these guys running 100 miles an hour, even through COVID, um, doing what we do best. Uh, and that is support the warfighter and support the chairman. Y'all guys, um, you know, talking with you day in and day out, um, learning, anything that I can from you, because um, uh, y'all have a combination of decades of leadership experience, and, and I'm a guy that soaks that all in. And as I transfer to the other side and be a civilian, I'm gonna take that with me. Uh, yeah. So thank you for being a part of my journey um, as I go to the other side and be a civilian. <laughs> uh, there was other people that helped me um, while I was here at the J39. Um, and that was uh, the supply guys, uh, which they were here, uh, and uh, VIP, I was going to give them a shout out. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I had to get done. You know, being a chief, um, when, you know, you don't, it's just you and two other people, you have to improvise, uh, mend relationships, um, you have to connect with people, you have to go out there and um, get on the deck plates, if you will, in making terms. And, and so those relationships to get the job done. And Larry was right, uh, that is something that, uh, that we do, and that was something that was drilled in me um, because of my uh, mother, uh, who can be here uh, because of uh, COVID. Uh, but she is a uh, veteran also by the United States Army, um, and she brought me up as a military child. Uh, got a chance to go around the world and see many things and experience many things with my sister and my brother. Uh, and my sister who's a, who's a Navy veteran too, and my brother who's a uh, Air, active duty Air Force uh, who's going to be stationed in Kentucky. And I asked him like, what the hell is out there? <laughs> yeah, the Air Force base is in Kentucky. Like, man, I guys are everywhere. But he is uh, doing great things, and I wish nothing but the best for him, and I wish nothing but the best for you, sissy. Um, the Chief's Mess. Joint staff. Thank you, guys. Um, going through the seasons, interacting with you, going out, having bowling, you know, going to the bowling alley, um, 
having those friendships, having those conversations um, day in and day out. I think that's what I'm gonna miss most about when I leave is you guys. Um, in the audience, I have uh, part of my flag detail. I have uh, Zach Murphy, uh, who we went to boot camp together. So I have a privilege of having him in here. He works for the CNO Adam Gill Day right now. And um, you know, he's doing great things up there. So it's an honor uh, to have you here too, Zach. Uh, I went in my um, boot camp book, yeah, I still have mine. Um, I was like, that guy looks familiar when we first met. So I went in my book, opened it up. I was like, I knew that was him. Zach right there with the baby face. <laughs> we all had baby faces back then, didn't we? Send him a picture, I was like, Zach, you were just like there a month before me. Imagine that, huh? Uh, the military is uh, a very small force where a lot of us come together again. We might see each other one time, uh, and later on we might return to the place we were at sometime in our career. And, um, you know, it's nice. This is, uh, that's what I love about the military, too. You run to the same people sometimes, um, and experience the same things, and, and, and mend those friendships together. Uh, Larry, um, I want to say thank you. I know, uh, we can't do FaceTime right now. But um, one thing I want to point out about Larry is um, uh, I'd rather he not come here because he's a cancer survivor. Uh, Larry is a strong individual um, that endured a lot. Um, he went through the chief season with cancer and completed it with cancer. And I don't know how he did it, where he felt, found the strength to do it. I know it was through God and, and prayer, but he made it through. And that was somebody I wanted on my side and, and to be my mentor. And I'm glad he picked me up when I went to Indo Paycom because being a young sailor, I was like, what do I do next? How do I advance? How do I get to, to the, you know, get my anchors or go the officer route? He snatched me up and gave me uh, the tools and the guidance necessary. Uh, so I can advance myself and advance my career and and learn how to um, keep myself together. So Larry, I thank you for that. Um, so where to start? Uh, I know I just said all my thanks, uh, but um, this is my speech right here. Usually I'm a person, um, when I say something, it, it's going to be from the heart. And I'm going to say it outright, and I'm, I'm not a scripted guy. Um, I can say that starting from you know boot camp, going to VAQ 135 out there in O'Carger, um, I had a chance to meet a lot of great people, and a lot uh, a lot of great people who put me on the right path. Uh, made me the sailor who I am today, because I know there's people that come into the military and they and they start off kind of wrong, and it takes them some time to either adjust or get on the right path and be that sailor that they need to be. Um, I'm gonna bring up Lieutenant Commander Gates. Um, he, was, he was a, uh, a role model that I looked up to. He passed away uh, when he was on his way to work. Um, big gentleman, uh, that was, uh, he, I was his first plane captain. And, um, you know, he came out there and uh, when we did all the plane checks, he would slap the tank hard, uh, the drop tank, I'm like, so you're gonna break it. He said, this thing breaks, uh, Aaron McCarter, we're in big trouble. I was like, yeah, you're right, sir. So, um, going from there, you know, um, there was a lot of things I did there, you know, leadership, friends, uh, mentorship, um, and most importantly, uh, my wife. Um, Chan, I know I don't probably say this enough, but, Thank you for being there for, for me since the beginning. Um, you're a beautiful woman. You're accomplished. Uh, you know what you want to do in life. And I can have any better partner with me as we went through this journey together. And I knew uh, that you were all about me uh, when I was sick. At the end of the I thought I was going to die. I think I had like appendicitis or something so bad. And you would drive, believe this or not, ladies and gentlemen, she would drive a, over an hour to come see me. I was E2, maybe E3. Broke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember one time we went out to go eat one time. And um, 
She was like, hey, let's go, let's go to the crab shack or the Chinese buffet place. And I went up to the ATM, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take this lady out, put my card in. Yeah, we ain't eating today. It's like negative five dollars. <laughs> negative five dollars. Um, so um, even then, um, just the genuineness that, that you brought uh, into our relationship and, and having a mother, um, Alicia, that pushed you to be a, a, the best person that you can be in the family. Uh, I knew you were the one that, uh, that I wanted to be with. So thank you for everything and being with me through this whole 21 years of uh, my service. And I love you dearly. I love you a lot. And uh, I can't wait to see you get your doctorate degree and, and, and make me a kept husband because that's my ultimate husband. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be taken care of. I have needs. <laughs> I, need, I need new shoes. So yeah, I look forward to that. Um, what else? Uh, you know, going from VAQ 135, went over to um, a school, like Larry said, uh, I didn't know, I knew what I wanted to do, um, and a person that had an influence on me being an IT was uh, Dr. Uh, Tonia Hawkins Carter. Uh, she was supposed to be here today, but um, uh, she had uh, children that were sick, or, uh, and she had to look after them. So uh, she's an IT, that's something I always wanted to be. I had a deep passion for that so much that uh, when I was undesignated, um, I gave up three years of being able to promote to E4, a third class, just so I could be in IT. That's how bad I wanted it. Uh, and I wanted nothing else. I was determined to have it. So uh, she played a role in what I wanted to be in the Navy. Um, also, another person I want to bring up is uh, Mr. Parks. Um, I know you know Mr. Parks, as you know. Um, he was in the Navy in the 40s um, during World War II. And I used to go to his house a lot and sit down with him and he would tell me all his sea stories. Um, being an uh, army brat, you know, everybody thought, hey, why didn't you go in the army? But sitting down with him every day and just talking about how he went underway and how planes would come in with their bombs still on, on, on attached to it and the, and the pilot was supposed to drop it in the drink and he still landed and then he got sent to the brig to hitting ports and doing uh, unspeakable things as sailors, uh, and then I found out what he was talking about when I actually joined the Navy. I was like, oh, okay, that's what he was talking about. That. So um, I thank him for that. Um, he passed away um, about five to six years ago, but um, I do appreciate him because he was a part of why I wanted to be a sailor. Um, going over to U.S. Indo uh Larry was there. He helped me um, be who I am. Um, molded me. Um, Master Chief Eric Stowe uh, was there also, and um, he he was he could put me where I needed to be. Yeah, also, I thank him for that. Um, I, li I like you know doing new things. I like the challenges and stuff. So I decided to go expeditionary, and I didn't know anything about that. So they were like, "Hey, why don't you go try it out?" I was like, "Sure, fine, I'll go do that." And I was like, "Hey, where are these commands at?" They said San Diego. I said, "Send me there now." Because that's where every sailor wants to be. I don't care if you're all East Coast, but I love San Diego. And I want to go back right now. But I'll stay here, though. I still got my house out there, so I'll go visit. Um, but when I got out there, I had a chance to learn how to shoot weapons. M4s, M9s, Mossbergs, 240s, 203s. I was like a, like a little, bit, little bit of Army, a little bit of Marine, but not really, not really that. You know, but we dabble. We dabble in the Navy. So I had a chance to do that, um, get stationed in the Middle East, um, see a couple things, and um, you know, experience something that not every sailor gets to. Um, Abraham Lincoln, um, there were some people on there too uh, that got me to where I need to be at. Um, Steve Luna, um, he was there um, to help guide me. Uh, I appreciate everything that he did for me on learning how to do maintenance, um, learning how to take care of a walk center uh, and everything. Uh, Jay Gunn, uh, Master Chief Aaron Franks, uh, Shackelford, uh, the list goes on, but I appreciate those people because it takes uh, good sailors to mold uh, an even better sailor of the same, the same caliber as them. Go over the uh, men's round, I did some rib round time. All right, I had my buddy uh, Eric Roscoe that's out there. 
um, that helped me, um, and also a really great mentor, uh, Roderick Maupin, um, who I have to reach out to. But uh, he, everybody said uh, the way his leadership style, uh, they saw that in me, and I appreciate everything that he did for me, and because and, I, I do care for sellers, I love sellers a lot, and uh, there's a lot of stuff I learned there. Um, one of the other people that 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 you know kind of blew me away because um, was uh, George Lacefield. He was a senior enlisted leader, and um, he also instilled in me some uh, character uh, traits that I carry with me today. Um, but before he left and before he retired, uh, there was something that stuck with me. This was about over a decade ago. Um, when he retired. Um, the one thing that he wanted to do was, because he loved sailors so much, and I love sailors too, not just sailors anymore, airmen, soldiers, and what not being in a joint environment, uh, I love that too. And what he did was he took the time uh, to recognize individuals um, that he thought were top caliber sailors. And I can tell you, even here in this environment, the joint staff, and um, you know, other parts of the Pentagon, there are top caliber sailors that need to be recognized. And, and there's two that stood out to me. Tech Sergeant L and IC1 Quarantine, please join Chief Carter on stage. takes pleasure in presenting the Joint Service Achievement Medal to Technical Sergeant L, United States Air Force, and Petty Officer First Class, Jalice Quarantine, United States Navy, for their outstanding meritorious service with the Armed Forces of the United States. Signed, James J. Mingus, Lieutenant General, United States Army. So yeah, George, thanks, thanks for the idea. <laughs> because there are great sailors out there. And there are great airmen too. Um, and Bill, you've done a phenomenal job uh, back in the office. And I appreciate everything that you did. Um, I hope to see you with, master, with your Master Sergeant stripes on and uh, go through the chief process, because there's no other process. <laughs> I will be there. Um, thank you. Uh, there's also some other people I'd like to recognize too. Um, 
and Larry kind of stole my fire uh, with that, but I don't mind because he's my mentor. Uh, is recognizing people that have served before. So if you have served in any capacity, can you stand, please? If you're a prior service, go ahead, stand. I want to say thank you for uh, serving, and I want to remind uh, people that are in uniform that uh, these people that have served before they are uh, living archives, um, and they have lots of knowledge to uh, reach out to them. They have everything that we're going through right now, they've been through already. Um, I often reach out to them uh, for all types of advice. Uh, KG, uh, who's helped me through my process, um, Burt Cochran, John Lehman, uh, Mr. Neeson, Tanika, and a bunch of other of you who have served, thank you. I see the value that you bring to the table, and uh, I just want to remind leaders, they are the living archive. Please reach out to them. Very smart individuals, and uh, it's worth it. Um, another thing I want to uh, do um, before I sign off, about to wrap this up, uh, is leave some things I've learned uh, in the military uh, for the ones that are continuing uh, continuing on and soon at some point we'll see retirement. Um, one of them um, I've learned is uh, if you're in a place of leadership, uh, take the time to go through the dead plates. Um, see your people that work for you. I have a good admiral that does that. He's interacting with everybody every day. But sometimes you're in charge of huge fiefdoms, if you will. Um, huge commands, but it pays huge dividends if you just stop in for like two or three minutes and say hi. Um, I've seen it with my troops, with my sailors, uh, when that happened and the morale goes up and, and, your, and, their, and your value in their mind goes up as well. Uh, the other one is uh, listen more, speak less. I'm a very good listener and that's one of the things that, that was invited to me. Uh, I'm a very observant person. Uh, it goes a long way if somebody has a problem. You know, try to try not to get too much advice and just sit there and listen to them. Um, there's a lot that can be learned. Um, Other one is uh, take the time to mentor. There's always some, somebody out there that needs that mentorship, and they might not even know it, uh, so they can get to the next level. Um, and where they want to be in the career. Um, it doesn't have, it could be anybody. If somebody needs mentoring, you know, take the time to step up and, and offer that, that chance uh, to mentor them and make them a better soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and um, cosmonaut, space force. I, I don't know what they call themselves yet, but <laughs> spaceman. So we'll call it that for now. Um, so take the time to mentor them. Um, also, um, before I sign off, I'd like to uh, give a couple parting gifts um, before I go. Um, one, uh, I'd like to give something to uh, Ivani. I would get for the sweets. effort in everything you do when chasing your dreams. Use your knowledge and your voice when facing adversity. And never stop learning and try something new. You're all, uh, you are always loved. That. Man, but this is 
I said a question, I'm like, is this really my kid? And it's like, no, man. But he has all my looks, so I was like, yeah, it must be some genetic thing way back then that, that you learned in class. So it's always a good thing. Um, dunk the basketball. That's all you need to do. Just dunk it. Okay. Um, I know you wanted to be a, uh, a computer engineer. Um, so I have one made with a computer on, uh, on there also. Um, one of the quotes we have at the bottom is from uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, your time is limited, so don't waste it living uh, someone else's life. Don't be uh, trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let noise of others' uh, opinions drown uh, out your inner voice. So um, there's a computer right here, and if you look closely, there's a picture there. That There's a couple of flags I like to give away uh, uh, to some people uh, that mean a lot to me in my life. Um, uh, one of them uh, is my uncle Mario. Uh, uncle Mario, um, there's, uh, you know, thank you for being there for me. household is uh, I'm his nephew son um, and uh, the way he stepped up uh, even even though he has his own kids he stepped up like a father um, somebody uh, I, I kind of seek after um, and, and that's been there um, there's an interesting story how we met um, I, I'm gonna just tell it real quick um, I never knew he was here never knew he was here I wasn't told by anybody that he was here in Maryland so I was on leave uh, for like uh, a week, and um, Shannon was like, hey, let's go to Ikea. And I'm like, I don't want to go to Ikea. It's like going to Walmart. It's like, I don't be trapped in that maze. She's like, come on, we got to go look for a rug. And I said, okay, well, fine. I need to get out the house. I need any stuff up in here, you know, just lounging, even though that's what I like doing. So we go to Ikea on a Wednesday in the afternoon, like around 11 or 12. And we're walking around. So we're looking at some bedding and stuff. And this guy comes out of nowhere. And he's like, hey. I'm like, yeah. He says, is your last name Munoz? I'm like, no, no. So I'm thinking in my head, like, my biological father, his last name is Munoz. And what did he do? He's like, some people out to kill his, you know, his <laughs> children or something like that? Is he out gambling or doing some horrific stuff? And I'm like, I have a biological father, his, his name, his name is, uh, you know, Lewis. He was like, I'm your uncle. And I'm like, what? I'm thinking in my head, is this really happening? I'm like, this has to be a gag, like Shan set me up and some balloons are coming out. I'm like, gotcha. But no, he was truly my uncle. Like, on a random day, I never knew he was here. At a random time, in any story, here in the DMV, I met him there. So, and I know there's something like divine that happens uh, that's bigger than us uh, for that moment to happen, and I'm glad it, I'm glad, I'm glad it did. I'm glad it did. Thank you, Uncle Mario. I have one for uh, my mother-in-law, uh, Alicia Nunnery, that uh, my brother-in-law's gonna take back. So um, I wanted to give that to Alicia because she's um, been like a mother to me also. Um, she was, uh, believe it or not, pivotal in my growth. Um, when I met her, I was known as that boy. 
Um, and there are some things I have to learn about myself that she taught me to, to be a better person, which is education. Um, take the do-rag off my head and get rid of the fubu jersey and <laughs> dress better. So, um, yeah, there's some things, I, and I sit there, like I said, I soak it in and, and I take it and I apply it to myself and it has made me a better man and it has given me an awesome life uh, that I have to do today. Um, and last but not least, Sissy, my sister. is also a Navy veteran. Um, I don't know if she was just trying to follow in my tracks when I joined the Navy too, but uh, I feel honored that you did. And, and, and I was so happy to see you uh, put on those utilities and blueberries and a thousand other uniforms we had for the last decade, <laughs> a couple of decades, Jesus Christ. But um, I was very happy. Uh, she went the airman route. She worked on F-14s um, as an AZ, right? and she had a phenomenal career, and I was so proud of you, and uh, also to see our brother uh, be an airman. I know, I know, Air Force, it's like, it's like, you know, I know, I understand, it's okay. It's okay, <laughs> maybe all the way, right? Um, and, uh, there was other people that were supposed to be here, but again, uh, due to COVID, I had a flag for my mother, I had a flag for uh, Dr. Hawkins, and uh, a great uh, father figure, uh, person, uh, Mitchell Washington, which he uh, truly deserved one also. Thank you, So, All right, um, last thing I want to do, this is it. Uh, let's get one good hurrah out from my cheese mess. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you for everything. Thank you for setting this up. AJ, uh, you've been phenomenal uh, getting this together and, and sticking with me, man. I know, I know it was crazy. Uh, Mo, thank you for being the president. You're awesome. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're a good person that I'm glad I ran into uh, when we met first during uh, this chief season. Uh, Vaughn, thank you for coming out and doing this for us. Uh, maybe since uh, out there at EODSU1, uh, I'm glad you made it to the level you're at uh, and, and keep driving. Uh, Zach, thank you. Uh, man, we go way back, huh? Boot camp. Uh, Byron. Keep going, bro. We had our talks together during the season. You're an awesome ITC. Um, hope to see you with Master Chief on in the future, right? Keep going. I think you're an awesome person. Letitia. Senior Chief, this side. But either way it goes, I appreciate the times that we sat down and, and talked. Um, and it gave me guidance to uh, learn a lot from you. Uh, keep, keep driving. Uh, and you're an awesome. You're a Chief. And again, Steve, again, thank you um, for being here um, and doing the ceremony. And I see Stacy out there too. Stacy, thank you again uh, for being an awesome uh, senior enlisted leader. And uh, Karen. And last but not least, Juan. Juan, um, I wanted to see you make senior chief, bro. I think, like, senior leadership and seeing what you do in the Navy, man, uh, I think they lost somebody really good. They're losing a really good seller. You hold your own in the J3 front office for like, you're the longest person that's ever worked there, Jesus Christ. Like, a long time, but you held your own. I see you during the season. Uh, I see you grind, and, and I see your voice, and yeah, but maybe lost some money good. So I know you're gonna do great things on the other side too. All right, um, I'll say one more thing. Navy Chief! Navy Come on now. Navy Chief! Navy Chief!
deliver the CPO retirement brief. Chief Petty Officers past and present. Attention. Today, our Navy has given most of the proper circumstances, the honors, traditions, and ceremonies back to history. Time does not give us the freedom to do these things from the past, but we still have to stop all engines, lay about smartly, and drop anchor to pay homage to one of our shipmates going ashore. To honor the 21 years served, the guidance, the leadership, the friendship, and the expertise that this shipmate has freely given. Damn, Shan, 
they're not necessary. <laughs> Thank you, guys. For 21 years, this sailor has stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in school learning our trade, this shipmate stood the watch. In those years when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, this shipmate stood the watch. Many times he would cast an eye ashore and see his family standing there, needing his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times. But he still stood the watch. He stood the watch for 21 years. He stood the watch so that we, our families and our fellow countrymen, could sleep soundly in safety each and every night, knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today we are here to say, shipmate, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Shipmate, you stand relieved. We have the watch. transition to watch. Father God, we have heard and we have seen testimony of mentoring and mentorship, of brotherhood, of sailors and soldiers, airmen and marines in arms together at war and at peace through long hours and family waiting, waiting for a loved one to return. And now, Father, as Chief steps down into retirement, as he moves into that living legacy, that archive of knowledge that he mentioned, and as he hands over uh, his mentorees, as he sends them to stand the watch and carry on, Lord, we ask that you would just bless this family that you would bless them into the next generation, that you would draw them ever closer together, that as sea tours have now ended and, and chief transitions, Father, that as a family they will get to spend extra time not only reflecting on the, the good past, Father, but by moving towards the future. Father, thank you for the men and women who could come and those who couldn't. Father, we thank you for this nation, for the men and women in this room and across this world, Father, who stand for freedom and justice, who still serve, oh, glory, beneath your flag, whether in uniform or not. And we ask that those still in uniform would carry the watch forward and that those that have retired would continue to mentor and breathe into these younger generations. Thank you, Father, for Chief Carter's service and be with him in this next stage. In your precious and holy name. Military personnel, attention to orders. I will now read ITC Carter's retirement orders. From Commander, Navy Personnel Command, Milton, Tennessee, 31 January, 2021, your request for transfer to the Fleet Reserve of the United States is authorized effective 
6 November 2020. Guests, please be seated. Side boys, post. In keeping with over 200 years of naval tradition, ITC Carter would now request permission to go ashore for the last time. All chiefs, past and present, man the rails. Shipmate, going ashore. Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, retired, departing. Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, retired and Navy family, departing. 